Hello everyone, it's Trina here from there is a card for that.ca and today I am going to be making a fun vellum overlay Mother's Day card. Uh, I wasn't sure exactly what my plan was when I started this, so I was just kind of playing around and decided I'm going to turn on the camera because if the card looks good at the end, I'm going to be sad if I didn't film it. And nobody wants to be sad, right? It's finally getting to be springtime here and so it's, it's so happy. So I'm going to start with a piece of 140 pound cold pressed Strathmore watercolor cardstock. And I have cut that down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I am just adding some clean, clear water over top. And then I'm going to drop in some distress inks just to make this splotchy, super fun background. Like I'm just, I have no plan. I have no no rhyme or reason or anything. I just I just picked out some bright colors because I knew that the vellum that I'm going to overlay it with is going to mute those colors down. So I wanted some some really really bright colors. And I'm just adding a little bit of water because I want as much pigment as possible. In retrospect, I probably should have used the reinkers instead of smooshing the the mini cubes onto my palette here. Um, but what do you do? I mean, maybe I'll make another one. Who knows? This was, this was really fun. This was just playing around and it worked out really well. So maybe next time I will try it with the reinkers. So I'm just smooshing again. I'm using Wilted Violet, Peacock Feathers, Mermaid Lagoon, and Festive Berries. The only one out of these four that I did not like as much as I would have liked to have liked <laughs> is the festive berries. I think I would have picked something a little pinker. Maybe an abandoned coral or maybe even candied apple just to get it. It just it just seems a little bit out of place. Like at the end, it's still great. Like I really like how the card turned out. Um, but if I had to replace one of those colors, that one would probably be it. Maybe because the rest of the colors are more on the cooler end of the spectrum. So like this red-ish color just stands out too much. I don't know. But I'm just going back and forth and then add in some more. Just trying to get a, a relatively good balance. At this point, I have no idea where I'm even going to stamp the butterflies <laughs> or anything like that. Uh, so maybe again, if I did it, I would have a little bit more of a plan. So it wasn't just this crazy motley background, but who knows? So I'm just adding more and more color, trying to deepen the, the centers of each of those little bursts of color. I think this technique would be really good for those Ken Oliver color burst things that I showed in that, in that one really long haul. <laughs> that was a long video, right? Um, I think, I think this technique would be good for that. Um, but I only have the one color and I haven't bought more colors yet, but I will because they're super fun. Uh, so I've cut down a piece of vellum and it's not any special vellum. It's just regular open stock vellum. And I'm prepping that with my powder tool because I am going to stamp the greeting and the butterflies from Lawn Fawn's Flutter by stamp set. This is an older stamp set and I think it's still available. I don't know. Um, but it's, it's super fun. I like to use this one for like when I still want a fun card. I mean, they're all fun, but like a fun card and, but a little more on the, like the elegant side. It's kind of like their dream stamp set with the feathers. We did a video about that a while ago. Um, there's, they seem to be like reaching across the board. It's not all just cutesy stuff. I mean, they're cute, but like not cutesy, like I'm not going to put like googly eyes on the butterflies. And then I am going to sprinkle it with my Detail Gold embossing powder. And I believe this one is from Ranger. I'm not entirely certain because when I transferred my embossing powders out of their cute little jars uh, into these containers so I could keep little spoons with them, it did not occur to me to write down who it's by, but I'm pretty sure that it's it's from Ranger. Um, I'm just not hundred percent sure. So, but I mean, if it's not, Ranger has a great gold, and you could totally do that. So, 
while I'm wiping things down and like moving my stamps out of the way, I've got my heat gun going on the side. The trick to vellum is to get your heat gun super good and hot, like 30 seconds, 45 seconds, like super good and hot because it melts so fast and the vellum will crinkle and not be awesome if you have a lot of heat going on on it. And we don't want that. We want, we want our stuff to stay flat, right? Like that's, that's pretty important. So I'm going to go back to this and that's kind of what it's looking like right now. And I decided that some of the colors just weren't dark enough. So we're going to do yet another layer with the, um, the wilted violet and the peacock feathers. Um, and I think I go back in with the mermaid lagoon as well. Um, just to get it a little bit more vibrant so that it really pops when you put, when I put the vellum over top of it. And I'm not super concerned about organic edges or manufactured edges where it looks straight and narrow as opposed to where it wicks out naturally because where they come together is faded. So you're not going to really notice that because you're looking through the vellum. So I'm not super worried. Like if this were to be my top panel and I wasn't going to cover it with vellum, I would want this to look splotchier. I want there to be a better blend. I probably would have picked different colors. Um, just a whole bunch of, of different things that you do depending on the technique that you're using. So I'm going to set that palette aside and I'm going to hit this with my heat tool and it needed to dry. Like there was, there wasn't a ton of water on there, but there was enough water that it was like starting to warp and stuff. So yeah, it took a, probably about a, a good minute, minute and a half to like dry that panel out. Today's card is going to be a standard A2 sized top folding card, uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to use a stamp set that is super new to me. And I should have prepped the stamp first, like stamped it off a few times, but that didn't occur to me. Um, from James, Jane's doodles called Mother's Day. And I'm just using this big, like, it's almost like paint strokes kind of font. Um, happy Mother's Day on the inside. And not only did I not prep this stamp by like stamping it off a few times just to get like any residue or anything like that, I decided that the very first time I'm going to stamp it, I'm going to stamp it with these coordinating distressings. So as you can probably guess, this stamp's pretty splotchy the first time. So we're actually going to stamp it three times just to get a really good impression. And I kind of, I kind of like the way the, the peacock feathers and the wilted violet come together here. And, you know, just in my efforts to actually finish the insides of my cards because I'm so bad at leaving them blank. Like, I don't know what people want written in their cards. Like, that's just as important as how pretty it is on the outside, right? So it's just, it's so much easier to leave them blank on the inside and let people write their own messages, right? <laughs> that's what I think. But then I would never buy a card with nothing on the inside, so... It's like the Sketch 22, double-edged sword, right? Um, I'm also going to use the Festive Berries and one additional butterfly from the Flutter by set just to, just to finish it off. And it looks really, really bright in there. Um, there will be a picture of the inside of the card on my blog because I didn't add one here. Um, and it, it does, it fades out a little bit. Uh, to attach the watercolor panel to the front of my card because it's watercolor paper and it got all warpy from heating and water and all of that stuff, I'm going to use a whole bunch of score tape all over the back. Like it's going to be completely covered. Like I don't want this lifting or peeling or anything like that. So I'm just going to cover it completely and then I'm going to lay it down. And I try to line it up, but I mean, I feel <laughs> that I cut them properly, but when you add water, it shrinks, right? <laughs> probably not. No, probably not. So I just have to trim the edge of my card because it was like half of a millimeter too big. And I didn't like that. And then I'm going to use Ranger's Multimedia Mat to go little dots behind the vellum, behind the embossing so that you can't really see it. There are gonna be some spots that like smoosh out and you're gonna be able to see those, but it is what it is. It's a handmade card. They're not going to be perfect, right? Um, we try. We try to get them as perfect as we can, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. So I'm going to add itty bitty little dots all over the place behind the butterflies and behind the greeting and just to secure it down as much as possible. 
Um, I'm not adding a whole lot of anything else to the card. So you really want this down because, I mean, that corner's going to snag. And so I also decided, because I can't stop myself, I'm going to be adding some crystals to the front of this. It's, just, it's Mother's Day. Nothing says love like glitter, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to add a few drops here and there where there wasn't a lot of butterfly to add the adhesive to. So I'm going to hold that down and then I'm going to get the sparkling clear crystals from Studio Cadia. And I'm going to pour those into my little triangle tray, which is still fantastic as long as you get used to it and you're not like knocking it with your hand, <laughs> which I do a lot. Not so much in this one, but in the last one it was like, ooh, that was really close. Um, and then I'm going to add more adhesive over top of the adhesive that I added to the back so that I can add the crystal and it kind of hides it, but I have them closer to like the bottom left corner and one near the top right corner or top left corner, um, just to hide those little dots. And then at the same time, not only is it more secure, you totally get more, more sparkle on your, on your, on your card. And that's always fun. <laughs> It's just, it's super pretty when the light catches it because like the, gl the gold is already gleaming and then this is already gleaming and it's just, it's so fantastic. And I'm going to put those away before I knock them over because we both know that it's going to happen. So that is our card for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this card, please, or like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe and comment. I love them all so much and I do try to get back to everybody that I can. I will have links to my blog post and my Facebook page down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.